And now, Sports Live Friday night. Welcome to Sportsline Friday night. I'm Eric Moon. Cole Sams will join us in a moment. We begin the highlights tonight with the first Berger Bowl. It's father versus son, Scott Berger versus Michael Berger, and Skyline versus Thunder Ridge as a new and fun rivalry begins. There are the two coaches with a friendly exchange before tonight's matchup, but on the field it was intense. Late second half, Grizzly 20 to 14. Lachlan Hackey scrambles, but he loses the ball, and Carter Hackbarth falls on it for a Titan takeaway. And the rights to the turnover belt. Two plays later, the Titans take a shot. Taven Oswald goes deep to Connor Hall for the touchdown to tie the game. However, a blocked PAT kept this one knotted at 20. Then Skyline goes on a long drive with two seconds left in the half. On fourth and goal, Lachlan Hackey finds his man Kenyon Sadiq and the Grizz take a 27-20 lead to the break. In an incredible game, the first Berger Bowl belongs to Scott and Skyline wins it 34-27. to Two teams played their first varsity games on new turf fields tonight. One of those teams was Rigby as the Trojans opened their home schedule against Bonneville. The new turf is looking good at Larry Wilson Field and the Trojans look good on it tonight. Opening possession for the Trojans. Luke Flowers finds a wide open Brevin Larson over the middle for six. And Rigby strikes first at 7-0. Next possession, Lucas McCullough wants a TD, and he gets it. Trojans in control, up 14-0 after one quarter. Second quarter, Rigby at the Bonneville nine-yard line. Fowler sends it to Zabe Balavai in the flat, who jukes a B, and he dives across the goal line for the score. All Rigby tonight in a 49-14 win over Bonneville. It was the home opener for the Pocatello Thunder, but this season, the team will have a new real home field advantage with the first game played at Lookout Credit Union Field at Pocatello High School Stadium. The ribbon is cut for the home team to take the field for the very first time, and the Thunder and their fans cannot wait for their first game. However, Twin Falls will be the first to pounce. Dalton Carter gets it in the flats and dives across the goal line, just making it in for the touchdown. Bruins out in front. The Thunder would strike back with Reichen Echohawk taking this kick return 38 yards for a big game. Setting up this pass from Dre, Dre Contreras to Alex Wynn with Wynn making the catch in full HD to tie full the HD. game. I know, right? What a play. Pocatello would add another score in the first. Contreras is looking deep and finds his favorite target, Prue Hales, for the touchdown, leading the Thunder to an opening victory on their home field, 27-7. Both Highland and Sentry have gotten off to an 0-2 start, and tonight was not only the chance to get the team's first win, it was also a chance to prove who's the best of the best in Pocatello. The Sentry student section was ready for a show. But the Rams start with some fireworks in the second half with Kai Cowan taking the kick return all the way to the house. The Rams trying to add with a field goal, but the kick is blocked by the Diamondbacks to keep the home team in. Highland would stay playing at a high level. Colt, Dur Colt Durham dives his way into the end zone for a touchdown. So what do the Rams do on their next possession? Well, just look for Durham again, and he'll be open downfield for a big game to cap off the drive. Drew Hymas sees nothing but daylight on his way for six. The Rams win this one in a shutout, 28 to nothing. It's only week three, but we already have a big conference game. Blackfoot hosted Hillcrest tonight, with both teams looking to start for a high country play with a win. Tonight was Military Appreciation Night with both teams unveiling new uniforms. The Broncos and Knights would honor their veterans by fortifying their defenses early. On fourth down, Hillcrest hands it off to Gus Camphouse. He was stuffed in the line to give the ball back to the Broncos. Blackfoot ended up going on to win this game 21-6. They would score a touchdown late in the first half to take a 7-0 lead, and they would go on to win this one 21-6 for a big for a high country win. Up next, we'll show you this week's top plays and some of tonight's scores. Stay with us on Sportsline Friday night. Your property demands equipment with more reliability built in. Kubota equipment. Bring home the Kubota BX series for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700. Find a Kubota dealer near you at gokubota.com. 
Is this our 45th anniversary or our 45th birthday? They're both the same thing. One's 45 years of wedded bliss, the other's a party. Phil Meter is celebrating 45 years of being in business. So it's more like being married? Yeah, I guess. Except you can't trade them in. What? The one you're married to. Gotta go. Why? I'm seven, and I'm a confirmed bachelor. Join the Phil Meter family of dealerships as we celebrate 45 years of doing business in southeast Idaho. It's Idaho Mountain Trading's Labor Day Ski Board and Bike Sale. All skis are sale priced from $50 to $200 off. There's also a great selection of snowboards that just arrived. Season junior lease packages are only $229 for skis and $259 for snowboards. Save up to 40% on their huge blowout of skis, snowboards, boots, bindings, parkas, pants, and more. Summer shirts, shorts, swimwear, and travel wear are 30 to 50% off. The Labor Day Ski Board and Bike Sale at Idaho Mountain Trading, the Mountain Sports Shop, downtown Idaho Falls. Welcome back. Time for some eight-man football. Butte County took out a water springs in Idaho Falls this afternoon, and it was all Pirates from the get-go. Rebel Beard takes the handoff on the Pirates opening possession and turns it into gold. He goes down the right sideline, cuts back all the way across the field for a 67-yard score. Butte tallied a two-point conversion for an eight-to-nothing lead. Next Pirates possession. It is Trayton Allen getting the call this time, and he'll find Pater from 12 yards out. Butte County scored 28 points in the first quarter alone, and the Pirates go on to win it 66-34. to Hagerman and Bancroft this afternoon taking on Norchamp. The Pirates would dissect the defense all day. Colton Foster with the nice catch for the first down, with Wyatt Hoskovich capping the drive off, powering his way for six. The Pirates would go for two, and Cameron Zeltner rolls to his right and finds a diving foster in the end zone for two points. Next drive for Hagerman, and Cole Rowley shows off his skills. He says, get off of me, and races his way to the end zone for another touchdown. The Pirates, the Pirates would try with another two point, and check this play out. Zeltner has nowhere to go, and he gets tackled right next to a 1928 Ford Model oh, that's, A. That's the tight Zellner, space there. I know. Zeltner and the car would be all right, as the Pirates win this one big, 46 and up. You don't see that every day. No, you don't. <laughs> car is right next to the field. That's incredible. To some scores now, Madison dominates Idaho Falls in a non-conference matchup as the Bobcats win that one 45 to 14. Plus, in a shootout, Burley takes down Shelley 42 to 38. And Sugar Stalem stays red hot with a 27-point win over Star Valley, improving to 4-0 this season. And the South Fremont Cougars stay right on their tail. South wins a hard-fought battle with Aberdeen, 21-14. It is 35 incredible wins in a row. 35 wins, that's something else for Westside. As the Pirates blow out Marsh Valley, 46-20. Bear Lake picks up a solid win against the Firth Cougars, 21-14. And Ryrie falls short against Wendell, 14-6. You can see more of tonight's scores on our website at localnews8.com and in the app. Let's get to our top plays of the week, and we have some great ones this time, starting with last Friday's Blackfoot Madison game. Jackson Grimmett scrambles to his right, and he sends a dime to Deacon Hale, who gets a foot in here for the excellent catch. Two great playmakers fulfilling their namesake in a Blackfoot win. Deacon Hale looking like Cooper Cup on that mm -hmm. one. That wasn't the only great play at Bobcat Stadium this week. At number two, Thomas Bohr scores a great goal for the Bobcats with the defender on his back on the service towards the net. Bohr incredibly gets a toe on that ball for a big goal in Madison's Wednesday night. Wednesday night win over Highland. Incredible stuff there. But at number one, we go to Friday's Century Bonneville game. Jack Romander scoops and scores a 60-yard defensive touchdown. But there's more to this story. If you were with us on Monday, we told you about Bonneville honoring a former coach, Brian Lampert, at that game, who tragically died in February. After every touchdown a B scores, that player gets a brand new ball to give to someone special to them. And Jack gave his ball to Carol Lampert, Brian's mom. Incredible stuff there, incredible gesture. The Romanders and the Lamperts are close family friends, and that was really cool to see. I know, what a tribute by the Bees. That's special to see. Absolutely. Sure. That's all for this edition of Sportsline Friday Night. For Cole Sams, I'm Eric Moon. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we hope you have a great weekend.